Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Devon Terrell, and welcome to another Help Me Devon tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon tutorial, I'll be showing you guys why you should be using compression on your masters. First off, no compression. I got better dreams, better teams, better settings, better scenes, better sex, better money, better weed, better vibes, better cars, everything. With compression. I got better dreams, better teams, better settings, better scenes. Better sex, better money, better weed, better vibes, better cars, everything. Now, if you're using headphones or using studio monitors, you heard that difference. It feels a lot more strong, powerful, glued together, more controlled. Now, let's play this back and forth with the compression so that you can really analyze and hear for what it sounds like. So, without first, and I'll bypass back and forth as this thing is playing. Listen close. I got better dreams. Better teams, better settings, better scenes. Better sex, better money, better weed. Better vibes, better cars, everything. Everything. Better decisions. Be so you hear that difference. It feels like when the compression is there, it feels stronger. And what's funny is it's not much of a huge volume difference as far as our metering is, is concerned. So we're kind of saving ourselves some headroom as well, making it louder without it getting closer, uh, so close to zero as well in the process. I'm gonna show you why you should be doing this when it comes to your masters, what's the purpose of it, and how it can really, really help your mixes. So first and foremost, let me show you the mastering compressor that I'm actually using. So right now I'm using this compressor. It's the T-Rex Classic Comp, one of my favorite mastering compressors. It just has a really interesting way and really great way of uh, mastering my records when it comes to, as far as compression is concerned and things of that nature. And I'm kind of going to break down some of the settings uh, as far as why I go about it this way. Now, not every compressor is made the same. For instance, the way that you would want a mastering compressor to react or the parameters it has is very different from a vocal one per se, okay? So I want you to keep that in mind that mastering compressors are called mastering compressors for a very good reason, all right? So a big thing on a lot of mastering compressors you'll find is you'll see this sidechain HPF or you'll see something that says high pass sidechain or sidechain 125 or, or some number in a sidechain with frequencies. Basically what this does is this says, hey, Compressor, anything below 125 hertz uh, on the frequency spectrum of this entire audio piece, I want you to ignore. What that does is it allows your compressor to not react so much to the low end. Why? Because we all know that the low end is what is going to get the most reaction out of that mastering compressor or that compressor in general. So instead, it prioritizes the topper, the more, I don't know if that's a word, but the the other side of your mix, 125 hertz and above that, and it basically compresses that and brings that up. And now when you compress that and bring it up with volume, you'll notice that it feels a lot closer to your drums and to those into that sound. So basically, we're getting a chance to really bring out the nuances um, uh, in the entire mix so that it kind of matches with that kick a little bit as well. So this is what you're doing when you're using the mastering compressor. You're really trying to control some of your peaks, and as you're controlling some and tightening some of those peaks, you're bringing it up. I am only doing one dB of gain reduction with my mastering compressor. I'm not going over two dB of gain reduction. Some people do, to each his own. For me, I like to keep it at about one, D, one to two dB of gain reduction and I get the result. Let me show you the rest of my settings. So basically what I do is I do a fast release and I do a slow to medium attack. The reason why I do a slow to medium attack is because I still want some of that transient information to cut through. I don't want it to sound so tight sounding. So that's really important for me. For instance, I'll let you get an idea of what it sounds when you have a very fast attack on your compressor. I got better dreams, better teams, better settings, better scenes. Better sex, better money, better weed. Better vibes, better cars, everything. Everything. Better decisions. There's a slight tightness that it has when I put it all the way to the front. There's a more open sound when I crank it all the way to the slower side. So I kind of find a spot where I'm like, you're controlling those transient moments a little bit, but at the same time, you're staying pretty open and you're not so tight. I don't want it to sound so tight when it comes to my master. I still want it to feel open and still kind of flow. And that comes with air training as far as you figuring it out. But medium to slow, you're in a good, pretty, uh, pretty good place for the most part. Other thing I did was I did a pretty fast release time. And the reason why it's important to do, you know, a, a medium to faster release time on the compression is because 
Think about it like this. You don't want that thing to start feeling like it's pumping. You don't want it to really hold every single moment uh, of your mix. You kind of want it to let it go. When it, when those kick moments um, come in, you kind of want it to release those moments. Or when those transient moments come in, you want it to pop, come right off. Just control. Keep it down. So you really want to make sure that you find this nice balance of attack and release where it's controlling that transient information, but at the same time, it's making sure that it allows the mix to actually breathe. So that's why I like to put my release time on more of the fast time, fast side when it comes to that entire thing. The other thing I did was, and to be mindful of, is the ratio. And basically, when it comes to the ratio, I like to keep my ratios really low when it comes to mastering. The reason why I like to keep my ratios really low is because if you have a higher ratio, you're going to notice that it's, you're going to get a tighter sound. Remember, ratio stands for, for every, uh, if you have a two to one ratio, it's going for every two dB over the threshold that you've set, I only want you to allow one through. So if you have a 50 to one ratio, you're basically saying, hey, for every 50 dB over the threshold, only allow one through. That's like a really tight, tight, tight sound that you're gonna create. And I don't want that. I kind of want it to be something subtle. I want it to be very, very loose. When it comes to mastering, I don't like these huge, gigantic moves. I like little subtle things that add up to a bigger picture. So when it comes to my compression, I like to make sure that I'm adding subtleties and not doing so much. So a really low ratio, I recommend. I like 1.7, 1 1.5 to each his own. Just keep that ratio kind of low when it comes to uh, your actual mastering compressor. Now, to show you just a final example of this, I did a bounce. And in this bounce, I did the one without the um, actual compressor or compression on it. And then this is the bounce with the compression on it. And what I want you to pay attention to is this. If you look right here, you'll notice that these really quiet moments have gotten louder. So you see the difference between this and this? I know it's extremely subtle, but this was what makes that huge difference that you're hearing as far as bringing out those nuances. So it's adding a little bit compression to some of the transient information, but at the same time, it's bringing up some of the stuff that was very, very quiet. And you can see this throughout the entire waveform, even when it comes to places like right here. You'll notice that it's kind of like quieter here, which is the original, and then it gets a little bit louder here. It kind of brings up those subtleties in those quiet moments, which helps it feel like glue because those quiet moments are getting louder while those louder moments got a little bit quieter. And now you have a more cohesive and more concise sounding master that sounds powerful and just sounds a lot better and sounds more upfront and in your face. So, that was my tutorial on why you should be using compression in your masters. I really hope that was helpful. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us at Help Me Devon on the Instagram. And also, make sure you follow our Discord community as well with a bunch of other engineers like yourself. Visit HelpMeDevon.com as well for some of our templates, vocal chains, presets, etc. at any time. Just help this channel and keep supporting us to keep us going. And um, until next time, you guys.